Welcome back. Science and art, you wouldn't usually put the two together, but a local exhibition has done just that. It's displaying images and art inspired by a very small field of science, nanotechnology. We'll hear from an expert in a moment, but first Marcus Irvine checks out the exhibition. It may be tiny, but nanotechnology is in fact a very big deal. It's a branch of science that manipulates atoms and molecules and has endless possibilities, from cosmetics to pollution control to improving medicine. The medical things, you know, that it promises are just, you know, they're fantastic. It's like, you know, it's science fiction coming true. Christchurch's historic Our City Ototahi building is hosting the Art of Nanotechnology, which aims to raise awareness of this young field of science. It's showing something that's quite new and it's going to be, the, well it is the technology of um, the future and there's nanotechnology in it, almost everything we do now, so it's allowing people to explore that and maybe build a bit of understanding about nanotechnology. Local scientists and artists have brought together photos and artworks in order to better explain nanotechnology. It's really vital that we have some understanding of it and so I think it's really interesting as an artist to be involved with that because in a way we can bring, maybe we can bring some of the ideas to light. And there's been some great feedback from the public. I think it's fantastic, it's interesting and colourful and very diverse. It's shown me that it's it's in everything rather than just those iPods that I just thought it was, but you know, like sunscreen, tennis rackets, jeans, and yeah, it's quite, it's everywhere pretty much. The exhibit runs until the 10th of September. Marcus Irvine, Metro News. The man who inspired the exhibition is Professor Simon Brown. He explained nanotechnology and its implications to Marcus Irvine. So Simon, you've been involved with nanotechnology for over 10 years now and the art exhibition was uh, sort of your vision. Could you basically break down what nanotechnology is? Sure, it's about really small things when it comes down to it. Uh, a nanometer is a billionth of a metre. Um, putting that in perspective, a human hair is 100,000 nanometers across thickness. Um, so on that scale we're talking about making things and understanding things on the size of a few atoms. So what's... Um, an example of nanotechnology? Well there's an awful lot of different examples taken from across the spectrum of physics, biology, chemistry, engineering. Um, uh, so nanotechnology really is just about the size and there's lots of different things covered by that. But some good examples would be the transistors, they're, they're the kind of workhorses, the key elements in a computer chip nowadays, they're already nanotechnology. Uh, but then there's a whole range of consumer products now, uh, things like cosmetics and sunscreens that incorporate uh, nanotechnology, a range of things like coatings on um, um, on windows to prevent um, dirt sticking to them. There's a huge, huge range of nano um, materials, nano products out there now. Cool. So, what are the pros and cons of nanotechnology? Well, on the one hand, uh, from a scientist's point of view, this is really cool technology. It's really exciting science. Um, the, uh, these nano things behave completely differently than things that we're used to dealing with in the macroscopic world. Big, a big lump of gold behaves very differently from a nanoparticle of gold. Uh, so the science is cool, uh, but there's a case that a country like New Zealand really needs technologies like nanotechnology to develop its economy. We're very much based on uh, agriculture in New Zealand. But then the downside is that the, uh, the properties of many of the nanomaterials that people are using in uh, consumer products are really not known. We don't know about their environmental impact, we don't know about their health impact. We do know that some of these nanoparticles can have serious effects on cells, cause DNA damage, cancer in glassware, in, in a petri dish essentially, uh, but we don't know what the, the effect of those products is going to be on humans. And I guess the, the concern there is that there's a huge uncertainty and we, we don't know whether there really are going to be uh, problems for people using those products. So it seems nanotechnology is already in commercially available products. Should, should it be in those products? Well, it's difficult to say, and I, I think one of the reasons that we're having this uh, awareness uh, raising campaign is that um, I think people should have a say in that. Personally, I think that um, these products should be labelled so that people know um, whether um, the products are there. Certainly sunscreens and cosmetics I think should be labelled. So you said um, about that awareness raising campaign, the art exhibition was part of that but there's 
there are other things as well? Yeah, so last night a guy called Don Eigler, who's an IBM fellow, one of the pioneers of nanotechnology, was talking in Christchurch. Uh, next week we have a discussion led by Kim Hill, which will involve people from the regulators, from uh, Friends of the Earth, people from scientists and toxicologists. Uh, the following night, uh, Georgia Miller from Friends of the Earth is giving a, a solo talk, uh, which is specifically about cosmetics and uh, sunscreens. Cool. So it seems you're doing uh, quite a lot to sort of raise awareness of uh, nanotechnology in, in Christchurch. So thanks very much for your time. No problem. Thank you. You may notice a stubble up on some election billboards around the city. As I've been finding out, for some candidates, politics is a family affair. This election will be a little different for this mother and daughter. Mum Nairi is campaigning for a second term on council and for a third term on the Shirley Papanui Community Board. Daughter Anna is hoping for a spot on the same board and they both share similarities. Our sense of humour. I was just about to say that. <laughs> the sense of humour is probably yeah. our most common feature. Um, in every other way she's probably like her dad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Another candidate is this man. Tim Carter's family have over 50 years experience in local politics. His father and grandfather have been on the city council before and now it's time for Tim's shot. I think it is important to look up to what they've done, you know, particularly my grandfather, 39 years is a huge length of civic service. So, and that I'm very proud of and if I could emulate some of his achievements that would be fantastic. After a stint in local politics in the 90s, Chris English, CEO of the International Aviation Academy, is following in the footsteps of his family as well. I come from a well-known uh, Southland farming family and um, it's also um, well-known in political circles in Southland, particularly obviously my relationship with Bill. The Bill he's talking about here is Deputy Prime Minister and cousin Bill English. So is he taking advice from his more widely known cousin? But no, no, we, uh, we certainly don't, um, don't discuss politics. <laughs> a common trait about these candidates is that they've all been exposed to politics and local issues from a young age, and they all look back on their family life as a strong influence. Families who are politically interested, they discuss politics, and um, their offspring obviously hear those conversations and become fully involved, and, and they can see that it's actually... Uh, uh, you know, very vibrant and interesting um, activity to get involved in. Probably because I was aware of the political environment, I probably realised how I could get involved when decisions or issues um, happened that I didn't agree with. And will Anna call Nairi mum if they get the chance to work together? I don't know, I hadn't really thought about it. That. Yeah. Uh, boss? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Butter? Everybody else calls me that. Really? I don't know, you might have to call me Nairi. Yeah, right. That'd be weird. And carrying on the family tradition is now a waiting game for these election hopefuls. Jonathan Mitchell, Metro News. Later in the programme, what keeps this 93-year-old volunteer searching for answers? But first up after the break, making a splash at this year's cultural festival.